Could DeSide be the next crypto sector to 100x now with big players like Brian Armstrong and CZ backing the entire sector now? Guys, today we're going to be talking about DeSide. And here today joining me, I have an early investor in DeSci, somebody who's been talking about the space for a while. Why don't you go introduce yourself to, you know, the audience if they don't already know who you are. So, yeah. yeah. How's it going, guys? My name is Patrick Sullivan, also known as that investor everywhere except for X because they suspended my old account. X is this investor. I've been talking about decentralized science for a couple months now. My entire YouTube channel has been dedicated to the cause because I think it's an underserviced area. It's still very very early days and it's kind of a complicated subject to explain to people so hopefully we can convey that message here together you and me aaron it's gonna be a good good video yeah so we're gonna be talking about all the topics me personally guys just so you know to let you guys know i don't personally have any money in DSI right now i'm gonna probably put some in a little while and i really don't even know what the fuck it is nor do i really understand it that well and that's why you know i have patrick on today so yeah, so the first question is um, what probably most people are thinking you know, off the top of their heads. Patrick, what is DSI? What is it? Yeah, DSI is kind of a catch-all term for decentralized science. So anything that you could think about in the scientific realm that is uh, healthcare from a, in a hospital or a rehab place to big pharma companies like J&J &J or Pfizer, um, the academic research protocol so p applying for grants to do research and then publicizing it for colleges to look at all of that kind of stuff is being disrupted with decentralized science and to be completely truthful there's probably even more sectors that we haven't yet had the time to like fully explore yet yeah so i think there's a lot of stuff going on recently you know we know that CZ kind of tweeted about DSI. You know, I don't think he tweeted about it directly, but it was kind of an indirect, you know, saying, hey, there could be a lot of innovation here. And I think one of the questions people have is, why is this needed? So, like, why does DSI even need to exist? Where does normal science fail where DSI kind of steps up and fills that gap or solves that problem? Yeah. So, my, I have two examples. The first one is from like real life experience here. So, I used to work as a genetic analyst in a genetic analysis lab out of Boston, and I have a degree in nutrition, which is like a biotech, a bio uh, science degree. And so watching the professors at college try and apply for funding and seeing how exhausting it was to literally beg people for money, beg to get a grant from a government institution or from a different company such as a Pfizer or again a J&J, it's exhausting. Around 50% of a scientist's time in their career is spent just begging for money. And so decentralized science, just like it did with DeFi, where it decentralized the access to money, is able to decentralize the access to funding for these scientists and so much more, which we'll continue to get into. Um, the other example, and this is kind of like for any of my conspiracy friends out there, this is a good one that you should be paying attention to. Back in the 50s, Coca-Cola paid Harvard scientists to only publish information that was pro-sugar. So do you, everyone hears about big oil and big pharma, but no one ever talks about big sugar. They literally had paid off the scientists at a very reputable college institution to misguide all of the regulation and misguide the public's perception on sugar so that Coca-Cola could continue to flourish. So adding a layer of transparency through blockchain technology and distributed ledgers and all that fun slang words that we use out here, <laughs> it's huge. It's very exciting. Yeah, so I could see, you know, DSI, you know, what you're kind of explaining here is that it is, you know, sort of a way to, you know, have scientists fundraise in a different mechanism. So in order for them to get funding for their projects or whatever, they can use, you know, a down mechanism or something like that, which, you know, I'll have some questions about. But how does DSI actually utilize blockchain technology? Like where does that, you know, kind of whole thing come in? Yeah, one cool example for me is with NFTs. So I know NFTs are pretty much dead right now, but that's just like the art side of NFTs. Now we're getting into the real life applications for NFTs. So let's say that a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization has successfully managed to distribute funds to a scientist. That scientist does some research, is able to successfully create a 
a result from a research study that was monumental in the space. It created some new cream for hair loss or something like that, right? Not that I would need that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> um, that that cream has intellectual property assigned to it. It has that the results of the research can get tokenized through an NFT and be put on the blockchain so that you could see a complete list of everyone who had a part in the creation of that intellectual property. And then you can see the ownership is directly tied to the person who like successfully did the research rather than getting taken out of the hands of the researcher for a Pfizer or J and J or Abbott, whatever these companies are. So utilizing NFTs, I think is a really clear way to see how blockchain is used. Yeah, that's really cool. And you mentioned DAO and all this. So how would a DAO be utilized to really carry this movement forward? Because we know DAOs are kind of, well, first, I think you should explain just, um, I think most people watching us know what a DAO is. But for anyone who doesn't know what a DAO is, I kind of give a brief, you know, summary of what it is. And then how does, you know, decentralized science leverage these DAOs in order to carry out the mission? Yeah, so a DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. We continuously say that it's a collective group of people who are rallying around a single cause or like a subcategory of causes. It doesn't have to be one thing specifically, but they are voting on proposals that are generated from, in this case, it would be scientists requesting funds. So the scientist goes, says, hey, can I have $250,000 to fund my research for the next two years? which is actually a pretty like feasible amount of money. And then the community is like, hey, there's a thousand of us. Let's go research what the scientist asks, is asking for and then vote yes or no. Should we fund this with the treasury that's set aside? And then the votes either come in, yes or no. And then whoever proposed that scientist, whoever proposed it is either going to get the funding or not get the funding. Yeah, so I think this is really cool because, you know, from what I'm hearing, this really lowers the barrier into, you know, being able to get into the whole science thing, because normally it's like, hey, it's very hard to raise money, X, Y, Z. Now it's like you can just use a DAO and just be like, hey, everybody, you know, we can do a crowdfunding or whatever, which I think is really interesting. But something that I think needs to be brought up, a question I kind of have and you know, you're going to have to kind of answer this is, could this sector potentially just end up being, you know, I saw Pfizer, I think, you know, bought into VitaDAO, which we'll talk about VitaDAO a little bit later, but could this sector in crypto end up just being potentially bought up by big pharma guys like Pfizer and kind of end up just being eventually, you know, right now it's kind of organic where it's like, hey, it's just a community and everything, but could this eventually turn into something that gets completely controlled by big pharma? Is that in the cards? Is that a scenario that could, you know, potentially play out? It's probably going to upset people, but the short answer is like, yeah, that is a possibility that they come in and take over stuff. There are mechanisms to try and prevent it, or at least like decrease the impact that a Pfizer investing half a million dollars in divided out would have. Um, it's called quadratic funding. And I'm probably not the best person to explain it because like its name, it's very complicated. Essentially, if one person were to invest $10,000 into something, and then at 10,000 people invested $1 into an opposing idea, the, the treasury, that is associated with that DAO would give more weight to the 10,000 people who contributed $1 each than the one big company that contributed the $10,000 in one, one go. Um, so that kind of gives weight back to the, the masses rather than just the individual or just the, the Pfizer coming into the space. It's kind of convoluted. And I guess in theory, you could game the system like Pfizer could just create 10,000 little baby accounts and fund it that way. So it is, it is, a potential downside, a potential red flag. Yeah, but I think, you know, if we're just being completely honest, this is a, a thing that's going to play out in all of crypto. We're already seeing it right now with BlackRock, you know, stepping in. They may or may not have been the ones who kind of orchestrated the whole thing with Binance. We know Larry Fink loves crypto now. He's probably going to be getting those spot, you know, Bitcoin, the spot Bitcoin ETF approved. You know, Wall Street and these big players and these, you know, big pharma, all these guys coming into crypto, everything. I personally feel that it's inevitable. And you can either sit there and be a little bitch and cope and be like, oh, no, blah, blah, blah. It's not going to do anything. They're going to come in and they have the money. So you can either try and make money with them or you can get fucked and basically get liquidated by them. That's my personal opinion. You know, I think it's like, you know, to a degree, there's always going to be some sort of decentralization. There always will be a place for, you know, 
things that aren't bought out, but eventually it's like, we're getting to this point now. We know like BlackRock, you know, BlackRock has, what is it? $8 trillion, like $10 trillion of assets under management. Yeah. There's only two countries in the world that have a higher GDP than um, BlackRock has assets under management, and that's USA and China. So they're absolutely huge. They're getting into the crypto space, and Pfizer, we know, is an absolute monster as well in the pharma space. So they're probably going to get their stake in all this. You know, They're not going to let a bunch of money go around, and I think a lot of people should be very aware of that. Um, I don't really like when I see people LARPing on Twitter about all this, you know, this bullshit, and, uh, like – eventually things are going to get bought out. That's just reality of it. And you have to understand that. And that has to be in your forecast. So that's personally, you know, my opinion on that whole thing. But now let's talk about some of the, you know, talk about major players coming to space and all that. We know that this, you know, decentralized science movement can't really, you know, when it comes to sectors, you know, becoming popular, it really comes down to influencers talking about it, the marketing, you know, the technology can be there and whatever. But if no one can speak about it, no one can sell it, then it doesn't really matter. And we know that there's two big players. You know, we have Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase. He is, you know, promoting his research coin. And then we also recently CZ put out a tweet, you know, basically talking about decentralized science. And he's kind of the one who's, you know, been the main catalyst for this recent rally we've seen in decentralized science. Could you speak, uh, you know, about those two guys in the the space and how this could potentially play out? Could those two guys be leading figures, you know, and all that other stuff? Yeah, I think it, there's a lot of things that we could touch on with it. Right now, we do see Brian Armstrong literally has his project Research Coin, which pumped a thousand percent when he put Research Hub in his bio. So, like, the space is so tiny that their their words mean a lot right now. And you hit the nail on the head with like. You could have the best idea, the best tech in the entire world, but if nobody knows about it, it doesn't matter. To quote literally you, you said that the other day. Um, so seeing people like Brian Armstrong publicize DSI or seeing people like CZ tweeting about um, how crypto could impact biotech is massive. It's, it's very exciting to see just uh, eyeballs start going towards it. Like we've been like invited out to get into some of the top players that have been performing during this this crab market, this bear market. Invited out has been going crazy. I think it was up at like eighty cents just two months ago, and now it just hit like three dollars and thirty cents. Invited uh, out is just another one of those DAOs, but they're focused entirely on longevity, so being able to expand human lifespan through research and genetic. Uh, information uh there we go there we go we got a d-side watch list up that's perfect yeah so i didn't want to cut you off there with me uh presenting my screen and everything but you know now i want to get into the token so this is the list made by the one and only joshua jake you could say he's you know a d-side general you know he's been on that for a long time shout out joshua he's been making content regarding the d-side space for like months now um, early investor in it so he put together this list and he claims it is the first list that was ever made for decentralized science on coin market cap and he's got a lot of you know tokens i want to go through these and talk about them but let's first go to you know we we're talking about research coin which is brian armstrong's coin it is right here let's just go take a look at it right now it is the two almost at 2500 largest market cap in crypto um it's sitting These things about, are small. It's very small. He's sending out 25 cents. And let's take a look at this chart real quick. You know, this is what really why we're here. Just take a look at this chart. You know, it launched, you know, back in the beginning of 2023 and it's absolutely ran up. So there's a bunch of other cryptocurrencies here. But what are some of the, oh shit, I need to go. Really <laughs> Research just... coins actually pretty intriguing because that is like a, a community website where people will publicize research that have that has happened and to try and get peer review um status on that research so you can go to the website and there'll be bounties everywhere and if you answer someone's question or fulfill a task they will pay you in research coins so it like it it uses the token to kind of incentivize a community aspect so i think research coin has a pretty bright future because of that like it tie if you make money off of something you're gonna stick around for it for a while so if you get paid just for your opinion it's a pretty cool idea yeah and didn't brian armstrong even put the ticker in his bio <laughs> yeah he put research hub in his bio and that everyone was like oh shit oh shit yeah and my you know personal thesis when it comes to investing and everything i think research coin is probably 
you know, I haven't really looked at all the projects and we're going to kind of go through them, you know, right now. But I think Research Coin, just off the bat, it's probably more of a conservative bet when it comes to space just because they have someone like Brian Armstrong and Coinbase backing them. I mean, that's mm-hmm. massive. So I don't think you can really go wrong with Research Coin. Obviously, there's a ton of risk always with crypto and you can lose all your money, it could all go to zero. But someone like Brian Armstrong backing this is absolutely huge and that's going to make it pump by itself. But now I want to get into... um uh VitaDAO. so i've been hearing a lot of talk about VitaDAO. could you explain what's going on with VitaDAO? you know as we take a look at this chart let's go to the chart real quick um on the year it's been absolutely it's all, almost 300 percent on the year it has a you know it's market cap is sitting around research coins market cap in the you know mid 2000s so what is going on with you know VitaDAO? yeah VitaDAO is was the first dow in decentralized science so they had first mover advantage um, the other day, I compared it to Solana, which was kind of a weird comparison, but in the sense that Solana had a lot of early day VCs backing it, and we just saw Pfizer really break ground as one of the first um, pharma companies to invest into decentralized science, and that was VitaDAO. That was at the beginning of this year. Um, there's talk on the street that they might be looking to do another round of investing into it. So it's like VitaDAO is getting a lot of funding from traditional markets. They're focused almost exclusively on longevity. Like I said, they're trying. I I personally believe that someone in their 20s right now, someone watching this video will likely live to be 150 years old. And that is partially in thanks to some of the work that that, uh, organizations like VitaDAO are putting in to fund longevity research and figure out how we can change DNA or just aid DNA to make it so that we can live longer. Hmm, that is very uh, interesting. Um, someone living to 150 years old, that'd be pretty insane. It sounds I scary. Do, no, I, I know. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. I feel like there's a lot of you know moral uh, people arguing about, should people be able to live that long? Should they not? But you know, at the end of the day, they're gonna, people are going to go do their thing. But you know, I yeah. think VitaDAO, from what I'm hearing, is, you know, they have a lot of VC backing. It kind of sounds like VitaDAO is going to end up, you know, getting bought out by Big Pharma. So that's kind of what I'm hearing because whenever you hear VC stepping in, et cetera, it means people are tugging power and, you know, people want their power. People want their say. So, of course, you know, it's, it's a DAO and everything. But it kind of sounds like, you know, Pfizer's invested it. So, but at the end of the day... You know, the reason why I'm here is to make money off the tokens. At the end of the day, you can sit around circle jerk code and be like, oh, this is real. This is not. But we're here to make money off the tokens. So I think Pfizer stepping in and, you know, being a part of this is definitely going to, you know, pump the token, not financial advice here and research. That's just what I'm kind of thinking. But if what- you, I, I would agree with that. If you want to pull up um, Molecule, I forget if it's like what it is, if it's dot com or whatever, but um, you have to go go actually to their website. You want to share your screen? Um, Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's go. Again, my window. If you made it this far, subscribe. Hell yeah. This is a lot of free alpha here, so make sure you hit that like button. This resource I'm about to show you is going to be super valuable if you're into decentralized science at all, so make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and tune into these videos. Aaron has been putting in work lately. So you can actually come to Molecule and see some of the research that is currently getting funded inside of decentralized science. If I can get to the actual page. Yeah, here we go, the ecosystem overview. So you actually get a direct line to see all of the DAOs that are currently operating and how much they have in their treasuries how many projects they've funded, all that kind of stuff. So VitaDAO is funded 21 total projects so far, totaling $4.2 million. That puts all the other DAOs to shame, Loki. <laughs> Maybe they'll catch up, but like we'll see. It's an order of magnitude higher than the second place. Or yeah. So I'm I'm excited about VitaDAO. This is a good resource. Make sure you guys pay attention to Molecule. Yeah, so what are some other uh you know, projects in the DSI space you're excited about, you can just, you know, run through them, you know, just talk about what are you looking forward to in this space when it comes to the projects? Yeah, here, I got a little list here and some explanations. Let's go. Um, uh-huh, VitaDAO was the number one thing on my list here. VXV, 
So VXV is something that people have probably got burnt with in the past because VXV had ran up to like $22 a coin. And I think right now it's sitting at like 20 cents a coin. So it went down an insane amount. But they're also a play on AI. They're vectorspace.ai or vectorspace biosciences. I would pay close attention to them. They're literally sending people to space, sending experiments to space. And there's talk that next year, so 2024, we'll be putting a lunar base, which is pretty insane. They'll have some role in that. AGIX, again, this is another play on AI as well. They just partnered with ICP. I know we got a lot of ICP heads here. So that's that's huge. They're focused on AI and decentralized science needs AI in order to succeed because there's so much data involved here that like it, you can't sift through all of it without artificial intelligence helping you. And then we got Gene. I am a huge fan of Gene. So think about 23andMe where you, you spit in a tube and then they go sequence your genome. Only 23andMe sequences about 0.1% of your genome and Gene does about 80% of your entire genome. So they could theoretically, as we learn more about the human genome and the different proteins associated with it, you, you could potentially pick up on certain biomarkers before you get chronic disease and then implement treatment or preventative measures prior to that. You can literally go, I think right now it's like $300, $350 to go get your genome sequenced through genes. So it's an actual product tied to the coin as well. It's not just some phony internet money. And then research coin. Really, this is a bet on Brian Armstrong, just being completely honest. We could talk about everything they're doing, but like if you believe in Brian Armstrong, he's not going to let his baby fail, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that's, you know, really important to point out and everything because, you know, you're really at the end of the day when you're investing in these projects, you're betting in people, betting on people, you know. We've seen so many coins make so much people money and it's a literal dog shit, but it made people money. We're here to make money. So now my last question, or I guess, you know, we can, you know, my last question is kind of where do you see the outlook? You know, of course, this is something that's we could be completely wrong about, completely right about. What do you think about the outlook of, you know, decentralized science and a scale of like, let's just say the next five years and then the next 10 years, where is this thing actually going to go? Yeah. As far as like potential market opportunity or uh, TAM, the entire market that they could potentially fill out, <laughs> this is a, a DECA billion dollar market opportunity. Like the entire GDP of the United States about 20, 22% of that is healthcare. Do I need to repeat that? This entire space is disrupting that entirely. Now, hopefully it should be able to draw down some of the spending and make it cheaper and just reduce friction. But this is a multi hundred billion dollar opportunity potentially. Over the next 10 years, let's say we could capture like one to 5% of that within the realm of DSI. You're looking at some some coins with market caps in the billions, if not tens of billions of dollars. Most of these right now, like Bite It Out is one of the biggest and it's like 25 million. So there's a lot of opportunity, but like you said, all these things could go to zero if they get completely crushed underneath the boot of corporate America. Yeah, I think that's definitely something to, you know, factor in that in America, you know, regulation, every, there is no real regulation for crypto. We just saw finance kind of get owned out but the good thing the good news is that you know the projects that are getting invested to by pfizer i don't think pfizer's going to let their stuff get crushed as we know pfizer is one of the biggest lobbyists in america they're going to make sure their their bags are safe so that's kind of my personal opinion you kind of want to go for the ones that have strong backers i think unfortunately i think on a long enough time frame cryptocurrencies that aren't really working with the government and don't have a big backer you know, probably will just get stomped out by regulation, unfortunately, you know, of course, they'll be able to, you know, go overseas, etc. But we know the most liquidity, and the most money is in America. So you want to be able to be, you know, able to thrive in everything in America. And also, I think, you know, decentralized science right now, I don't have any money in it, but I'm definitely gonna put some bread in it soon. I think this is tons. I think this is gonna make so many multimillionaires. Now, once again, it's kind of like, you're taking on a lot of risk. I think this is definitely going to be one of those. These are kind of like, I guess, low cap gems, you could say. So they're probably going to pump really quick and dump really quick as well. A lot of these projects are not going to make it past 
this next cycle. So a lot of them, there's going to be a ton of more DSI projects that are going to pump and they're going to come up out of nowhere and they're going to say this and that, but they're not going to make it. It's probably going to end up being a couple big players, um, you know, winning at the end of the day. This is pretty, you know, standard with a lot of industries or sectors where it's like, you know, it starts out a ton of them and then a bunch of them get acquired or bought out or they just end up failing. So I think, you know, to keep that in mind and always, you know, understand that when you're putting money in crypto, that it could all end up going to zero. But yeah, you know, I think today was a great talk, you know, covering the DSI sector. I think this it's going to do absolutely amazing as we talked about. And thank you, Patrick, for coming on today and, you know, explaining everything for me and the audience. Yeah, Aaron, thank you so much for having me. This was actually a very good conversation. So I hope people watched this two times through, to be honest. There's a lot of information here. Yeah, so if you made it this far, make sure you subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about DSI. And then in the first link in the description, I have my private Telegram group. And then also go follow me on X. I'm most active on X. And yeah, thank you for watching.